Final frantic hours of transfer window as Thursday deadline looms. As President Buhari honors D. Tagris, Nigerian wrestlers cry injustice. Are these and other major stories will make up the show tonight. This is Sports Center. My name is Juliet Mafua. Thanks for joining us. The show. After the money fight, Boxing Well turns attention to Golovkin Alvarez showdown. Oh, what a load of days been in sports. We get to check out some of the biggest headlines in graphics. Nigerian Super Eagles have only one mission on Friday in the year, and that is beats the African champions Cameroon in the 2018 World Cup qualifier. Now, beyond the ticket to Russia, there is an extra motivation for the Super Eagles. The team is spurred by the will to win for Erling goalkeeper Carl Ikeme. Now, earlier at the Media Pali, uh, Coach General announced uh, that Chipper United goalkeeper Daniel Akwei uh, will not be in goal as he's out injured. Now, FC Fanyuba goalkeeper Ike Chikwezenwa will now wear the number one jersey at the Crunch World Cup qualifier. So it's been a beehive of activities in the camp of the Super Eagles in Oyo. Our man, Promise of Foge, has been with the team. I spoke with him a few hours ago on our news channel. Uh, he gave us a look into what the players have been up to. I will now go back to Uyo Akwaibom State, venue of our Super Eagles game against uh, the indomitable Lions of Cameroon in the World Cup qualifier. And Promise of Foge standing by. Hello, Promise. It's good to have you back. So uh, I was talking about uh, uh, the second training section earlier on, uh, and uh, it seemed you had a lot to say, uh, but we couldn't just get to hear you. So can you uh, get back to what you were saying then? Okay, Juliet, I was trying to tell you that uh, the Super Eagles arrived, uh, they got to the Aquabio, um, I mean, Aquabio Stadium at about uh, 4 or past 4 p.m. this evening for a closed training session. Uh, they really sweat out at the main bowl uh, for about two hours. It was a closed session. Uh, nobody was allowed in because the technical crew uh, felt they wanted to keep uh, their tactics uh, close to their chest. And so no one was allowed in to really get to see the players train. However, from where I was standing, I was able to see uh, some of the movements of the players Everyone seemed to be healthy, uh, save uh, uh, Akbayi, the goalkeeper who is down injured, who, and who also has been replaced by Ikechuku Eizenwa. And with the look of things here, it is obvious uh, there's just one thing on the minds of those players, one thing on the minds of the coaches. I uh, pick three uh, um, a maximum points against Cameroon, and that will be all for them. Okay, uh, General did, did say in the press conference uh, that he wants the stadium to be filled up by all Nigerian fans. Now, in New York, what's the atmosphere like? How excited are the fans? Are they really looking forward to this one? Do they know it's a crucial game? Well, I... I've been to Oyo uh, uh, before uh, whenever the Eagles uh, have a crucial game like this and uh, um, it's always, always very, very uh, um, interesting to come here to watch football matches because people here love football. This time around the stories seem to be different. Um, uh, that frenzy is, is lacking, that, that spark is lacking and I would perhaps attribute that to uh, the loss that Nigeria recorded against South Africa a couple of uh, months ago in a Nations Cup qualifier. Perhaps the fans here are 
are yet to recuperate uh, from that shock against the Bafana Bafana. However, I expect the Gospel of Fabio Stadium to be filled to capacity uh, come Friday because this, this is an important game and the fans here know how important that game is and they know how important support will be uh, for those Super Eagles. Uh, Juliet, I have with me um, a sports journalist uh, in person of Shino Okeleji who has been monitoring the Super Eagles here with me. Uh, Shino, quickly, uh, what are your thoughts about uh, the, the national team, what you've seen so far and of course uh, uh, the atmosphere here in New York? I think you can see that the expectations here are quite lowered. I think the loss to South Africa, like you said, actually attributed to that. Some of the fans here are a bit skeptical. They are not sure about the Nigerian side. They've seen Cameroon play at the Confederations Cup. They could see the kind of danger and, of course, what they pretend. So I think um, for a lot of people here, they're not so ex excited about the Super Eagles. But I think the Super Eagles know what's at stake. They understand that three points here will probably, you know, like, take them nine points on the table. They travel to Yaoundé, hopefully pick up one point, and they know the World Cup tickets would have been sealed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a closed session today. Tactically, um, Genetro had know exactly what he wanted. The press, you know us, we always come out with tactics and everything <laughs> before the game. Um, Cameroon are not coming here, they're not opening themselves to us to, for us to see what they are doing. So Cameroon are doing a closed thought session in Cameroon. Nigeria would definitely want to do one, and I think it was good for the coach. He's seen everyone close personal, up close and personal. Some of the players only arrived yesterday, so today was a chance for him to actually explore all his options, and I think he's made up his mind only about the goalkeeping positions. Other options are still open. All right, uh, Juliet, you just heard from, from Shino. Certainly the Cameroonians are not in Oyo yet, uh, but uh, we understand they will be, you know, um, coming into town later tonight or perhaps tomorrow morning. Hmm. Everything seems on board then, promise. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was earlier on uh, today uh, on our, our News Hour program. Well, excellence never goes unrewarded. The feat of D Tigris at the Afro Basket Women's Championship in Mali has sparked a gesture from the country's uh, president, Muhammad Buhari. Uh, the president has announced the reward of 1 million naira each to players and officials of the women's basketball team. Now, D Tigris were hosted to a reception at the presidential villa. On Wednesday, now wearing green blazers and their medals round their necks, uh, the players presented the trophy they won in Mali to the president. And Andre beats defending champion Senegal in the final of this year's FIBA Afro Baskets to emerge African champions for the third time. We feel overjoyed because the president invited us to come here. We really feel overjoyed. We're excited and, uh, you know, we promised to give uh, Nigeria more, more victories. And by the grace of God, we're going to go to Spain and, you know, give more victories by the grace of God. We play together as a team and we believe in each other. My team and we all believe in each other. And we just go there, you know, as Coach Sun said, he said, don't stop playing until you hear the last buzzer of the whistle. And that's what we did. We just keep on playing until the end of the whistle. And we came out with a victory. A month ago, before our inauguration, we were asked the same question after our elections, what was going to happen in Mali. Um, we told you guys that we were going to do very and exceptionally well. I'm sure we couldn't have done better. For Spain, I will just tell you this, we're going to do excellently well. We're going to try to do much better than we did in, uh, on the African Championship, hoping well that we will come within the first three. Right after the money fight between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor, a boxing fans brace up for another showdown in Las Vegas. Undefeated Bernadine Golovkin will take on ring middleweight champion Sal Canelo Alvarez. Now the bout will determine who is the undisputed king of the middleweight division. Now, Golovkin will be defending his WBA, WBC, IBF and IBO middleweight titles. Now it's all happening in Las Vegas on September 16th. Following Saturday's silencing of Conor McGregor by Floyd Mayweather in the most hyped fight of the decade, the boxing world now turns to the showdown between unbeaten middleweight champion Gennady Golovin and Saul Canelo Alvarez. Kazakhstan's Golovin will carry a 37-0 record including 33 knockouts and his WBC, WBA, IBF and IBO championship belts into the September 16th fight in Las Vegas. Colovin and Alvarez, the red-haired darling of boxing crazed Mexico with a 49-1-1 record and 34 knockouts, took part on Monday in a Los Angeles area promotional walkout.
Knockout artist Golovin has been so efficient in the ring over the last few years that he has had a hard time getting top flight opponents to agree to fight him, including Alvarez. The 26-year-old Alvarez will be going against the 35-year-old Golovin, who was pushed to 12 rounds for the first time in his previous bout against Danny Jacobs. But Canelo isn't thinking about victory just yet. No, we'll have to see. That's the last thing on my mind. First, you have to win. And that's the most important thing. And then I'd like to build my family. The people who have been with me from the very beginning. And that's what I'm interested in. Canelo began boxing professionally at 139 pounds, aged 15, before moving up through the weight classes, holding world middleweight and super welterweight titles. The only blemish on the Mexican's record is a 2013 title fight defeat to Floyd Mayweather via a 12 round decision. Uh, coming up, sports journalist Wilfred Mong will join the show as we talk up the big stories during the sports press review. Well, the IWAF World Challenge continues. Uh, this time, the train is in Zagreb, Croatia. So how did Nigerian sprinter Blessing Okagbari fare this time? The double Commonwealth Games champion took her chances, putting behind the disappointment of the World Championships to win the women's 100 meters. So you get to watch Okagbari. Show she still got it. There is the lineup, and it's a pretty classy lineup too. Dina Rasha Smith of Great Britain in a fabulous form. Putting the disappointment of the World Championships behind, Nigerian sprinter Blessing Okadari won the women's 100 meters at the IAAF World Challenge in Zagreb in 11.14 seconds. Three, IA in four, Asha Smith in five, watch the Britain. Okabari six, Henry seven, Kapoor in eight. Will they get away first time? Fourth from left there is Dina Asher Smith looking very strong at the moment, probably leading at the moment. Is she going to take this one? Oh, what a run from Okabari. Okabari storming through to steal that one from uh, Asher Smith and Aye. That's the one, two, three. Brilliant run that from Okabari. 11.14, the winning time. And she is so powerful. Really continues to accelerate when others are hitting their top speed around 60 or 70 meters and that's a surprisingly strong run from Okubare who has been struggling for consistency this year watch her third from left doesn't get the best of starts that's for sure coached by John Smith Britain's Dina Asher Smith finished second while I am Michelle Lee of Trinidad and Tobago placed third. But a Cadbury will need to run faster than the time she posted in Zagreb and the 10.99 seconds personnel season's best she ran in London last month to get a chance to emerge the blue ribbon winner for the season. Point one four for Okubare, 11.23 for Asher Smith and uh, Michelle Lee Aye, 11.26. The men's 100 meters, and this again is a very good lineup. Guliev, the world 200 meters champion from London three weeks back. Johan Blake, the 2011 100 meters world champion. And former world champion Johan Blake claimed the men's 100 meters victory. The Jamaican bounced back from a disappointing outing at the IAAF World Championship last month to race in a time of 10.05 seconds. This is champion. <laughs> Not a bad start from Guliev, although Mike Rogers leaving him at the moment. He's got some work to do. Guliev, sure he's not going to get back from that. Johan Blake leading the moment. Johan Blake's going to take this one and take it well by the best part of a metre from Mike Rogers and Asafa, Asafa Pal. 10.05 there from Johan Blake, who is rounding back into something like his old self. Maybe not yet. Blake will own the record of the second fastest man of all time, beat American Michael Rogers. 10.14 seconds and his fellow Jamaican, Ashafa Powell, 10.16 seconds to much top of the race. But uh, he's running consistently and he's winning and that's important. And he's...
Okay, so sports journalist Wilfred Monk now joins uh, the show. Good evening, Wilfred. Good evening, Juliet. And uh, always a pleasure being here. Okay, we just saw Bless Nokabari. You know, doubters may have given up on her, but mm. she surely hasn't given up on herself. Still Not pushing on. Yeah. Even though a lot of Nigerians feel, <laughs> come on, it's okay, just, just end it now. Are, are you one of those Nigerians? Uh, no, uh, no, okay, maybe not. We still have hope. Don't put me on that uh, well, 11.14. That was the time she posted in that one. Not good at all if she wants to be amongst the money guys in that finals in Brussels on Friday. Uh, because her season best 11, uh, 10 99 uh, even her season best is not even enough for her to get a, a good place in at that Friday finals because Ellen Thompson is there, mm -hmm. even the Ivorian um, Talu. Talu is also there. So She will uh, need to improve on that. Yeah, time. but at least she's guaranteed $2,000. That's what the last person <laughs> would get important. on Friday. And, and it's, a, it's a moral booster for her. <laughs> yeah. She's coming first for the first time. It's been an, an inconsistent year, really, well, uh, for Kabari. Well, the question is who were the opponents? It uh, doesn't mean. Sometimes <laughs> you just need, you know, you just, you just need that to boost your confidence. Mm. Like you can still do it. All right. And I think uh, we should still be supporting us Nigerians. Yeah, sure. Yeah, she's still the will. brightest star. Yeah, sadly so. Yeah. Sadly so. Yeah, she is. Okay, a reward for the Tigress. Uh, mm. uh, an, an announcement of a reward, if we should put it that way. Yeah. One millionaire from the president, mm -hmm. uh, Buhari. And um, you, you want to say fair enough? One million naira? <sighs> well, uh, there's no money in the economy at the no, moment. No. So, I mean, one million naira is still, it's still good money. Although for many of the, the ladies, uh, one million naira is not so You know, much we're actually talking today. about just um, how, how best they should be rewarded. Because they've done something, you know, that that's, the Super Eagles also did back in 2013. And we, and we know what it was like. Yes, I, I get what you mean. But at the same time, you know, some people could call for maybe landed properties and all the or rest of it. Or even M-O-N, I do. Yeah, that could still come. This is the first of many feats, okay. you know, still to come. So I, I think this is just okay. Um, but the big question is immediately I, I saw it. Um, I had to look out and see if others were being rewarded. For example, the wrestler. Uh, that won silver for us at the World Championship that ended in mm -hmm. France recently. That's um, um, Adek Ruye, if I'm not... Yeah, yeah, Adek, Ayo, yeah, yeah that's Adek her. Ayo, yeah, winning the silver. So <coughs> she wasn't rewarded, of course, which was you, you worrisome see, You just brought me. up the issue of the wrestlers. Okay. And, uh, we, we actually had uh, the president of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation, okay, Daniel uh, Igali, okay. as well as Adek Ruye. Oh. So, and they were disappointed mm. that they didn't get to have a reception with the president as well. So what we do now, uh, we just get to hear their sound bites. Okay. I'll come, I'll come back to talk about it. All right. I'm disappointed. And I believe maybe the minister will still find time to receive me. But for now, I'm really disappointed. We went to African Championship uh, by May, in May, and we won eight gold medals. And no one showed up to receive us. And Afro basket is just like African championship. It's, it's African championship too. They won just one good. And they, were, they have been received. In the past four, five years, we've not had any able-bodied Nigerian athlete that has won a silver medal at the world championships. Adekore has been the only athlete in the past four years that has won a bronze medal at the world championships and a silver medal this year. And I am extremely, extremely happy with their performances. It was not only her blessing of Buru did even wrestle for bronze. Wilfred, she does <laughs> have a point, really. Yeah, she does. If, if you look at it from the angle she's coming from, yeah, that's and, a huge and, point. And, and funny enough, I was even talking about the World Championship, forgetting that even recently... There was an African May, Championship. Exactly, and yeah. Nigeria did well, irrespective of um, the poor preparation and we had And that's an individual performance, so if an individual comes and wins gold, then that person should be celebrated. And, the, and in that the one, is a team performance, many but anyway. of them won gold in May. Yeah. And the Tigress, just as she was saying, is just won gold, irrespective, because it's one team and yeah. one gold medal. Anyway, that's not in our purview, so we, we just let that be. I think it's just an government. oversight. Yeah. It's Maybe more now of they've an spoken oversight. out, something will be done about Maybe. it. And we'll go to the camp of the Super Eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we heard from uh, Promise of Foge uh, earlier, and everything seems to be going down uh, to plan. But uh, the major problem uh, the, was the latest development that came out of the camp. Daniel Akwe out injured. All right, it was a big headache, even mm. having Akwe. 
in the first place. Okay, but now, Ike mm. is in is, should that be a worry? Should that be a concern? Well, the goalkeeping department has always been a worry, especially after the shambolic performance, we would say, in that game against South Africa in the Nations Cup qualifiers. Now, this time around, it gets tougher playing the African champions, Cameroon. Uh, I think it's one headache solved for many Nigerians mm. because I'm sure many Nigerians didn't want to see at being post again. So they leave us with SM1 now. And uh, for SM1, this would be his first competitive start for the mainstream Super Eagles. And it's coming on the big stage mm. against Cameroon. Okay. It will really be a huge mm. testing ground for him. But uh, it, it, it's now down to the defense to try and shield him. Uh, that's the best we have at the moment. We just have to make do with it. All right, then. So uh, we're hoping, um, uh, I mean, Ezen has a good time on his first big day. Yeah, we hope <laughs> so, like he did during the Chan um, game against Benin Republic. Oh, yeah. Well, 24 hours, transfer deadline, the clock is ticking, and Ooh. we are monitoring all the movements there. Arsenal Manchester City seems to be the biggest club having the biggest business, mm. but it looks like it's a whole lot of buying out from Arsenal. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Uh, we understand it's right now they're going medical at Liverpool. Mm. Shocker, uh, because uh, all, all season we're expecting him to move to Stamford Bridge, that's Chelsea, and he made a U-turn to go to Liverpool. Now, and, uh, my worry for Oxlade-Chamberlain, you're living an Arsenal team that is not winning trophies. Now, if you want to move to a club, we expect that maybe you're going there to win trophies. Now, so if, you, if you look at a better, a better option, yeah. yes. And again, we knew he was going to play as a right uh, wing back, but he says mm. he wants to play centrally. And we're wondering if he'll have the opportunity to do so at Liverpool because there's Wijnaldum, there's um, Coutinho is still there, uh, there's Henderson, Emre Chan. It's going to be a little bit difficult for him. And, and Manchester City, they're preparing an improved bid uh, for Alexis Sancho, £70 million. Pounds, uh, but Arsenal still holding out for plus player. Yes, because Arsenal know they are losing a lot of players. Gibbs has left, Mustafi is on the verge of leaving, you know, Sanchez, could, a lot of players could leave. So if they have a cash plus player option, I think it's cool for Arsenal. Now, Sergio Aguero seems to be more preferable for uh, uh, Arsene Wenger there. Well, I don't think it's coming. <laughs> okay, we keep on uh, keeping tracks with all the moves as it mm. happens. Tomorrow is going to be a huge day sure. in transfer, no doubt. Mm. Thank you very much, Wilfred Mark. Always a pleasure, Juliet. Okay, still ahead. More big name casualties on day three of U.S. Open. Well, the U.S. Open continues to take down its big name casualties. Australia Nick Rayards is the latest top male star to crash out at first round, shockingly losing to world number 235, Dan Millman. A Britain's Eugene Bootcat has also been dumped out right after her criticism of Maria Sharapova's return. Sharapova, meanwhile, is surging on. Now you get to watch highlights for the last Grand Slam of the tennis calendar. The opening round at the U.S. Open has proved to be a grand slam for the fans. The Billy Jean King National Tennis Center is filled with fans for the first round of matches. Some of the fans are most excited to see tennis greats like Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal at Flushing Meadows. Rafa, because he's, he's the king of clay and I'm just a huge fan of Rafa Nadal. Uh, mainly Roger Federer because he's uh, the all-time greatest player. He did a boot. I also am looking forward to had lost 7-6-1 to Evgenia Rodina in the first round of the U.S. Open in a big upset and has now failed to make it past the second round of her last eight tournament, starting with a second round exit at Roland Garros. The 89th ranked Rodina, who is one of two mothers in the 2017 U.S. Open singles draw, ended a four-match losing run on the WTA Tour and will next face fourth seed Elina Svitolina. 15. Earlier on, world number three Roger Federer survived a first round scare from Francis Tiafoe as the Swiss dog Dave to beat the teenager 4 6, 6 2, 6 1, 1 6, 6 4. In the deciding set, Tiafoe saved a match point at 3 5 down before breaking Federer's serve with a brilliant forehand pass. But Federer came back to break serve and take the match in the next game to win in two hours, 41 minutes. Argentine Juan Martin Del Potro had to work hard before seeing off Henrik Laksonen of Finland, 6-4, 7-6, Oh, we had it.
Okay, that's it on the show, Sports Center. Hope you had a great time with us, because I did. Now, do join us tomorrow, God willing. I am Juliette Marfour. Have a good night.